Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? But not for Balanopsis Guinea's Black Eagle. Hi there. Thank you for coming along and having a look at my little updates here. So this is my little twinkle that a couple of months, no, gosh, long, longer than that, I repotted into my preferred setup, which is LECA and self-watering. No distinction, big LECA, small LECA, just LECA and self-watering. So this is the Red Fantasy, which I all bought at the same time from my local garden center and then only waited to repot when I saw signs of new growth. I didn't wait for new roots. I just thought, vigorous grower, in you go, I'm at it, you're it. So Red Fantasy, as you can see, is doing absolutely fabulously and is full, full of spikes. I was trying to tweak one out of its stuck leaf and I broke it, but you know what? With abundance like this, I'm not particularly concerned. So Red Fantasy is doing really well. We will see twinkle blooms whenever it decides to do so. Let's go to cinnamon. Cinnamon is trying to spike. And I'm going to let cinnamon spike for quite some time until I've tricked it, excuse you, until I've tricked it to think it's going to bloom. And then I'm cutting the spikes off because I don't like how this orchid has progressed or has not progressed. It's growing well. It is somewhat pot bound. I mean, you know, I don't like though that it's not completely pot bound after all this time. So I have little spikes here. And like I said, they will, I'll probably let them get to this size on a red fantasy when I'm about to see the nodes and the branching. That's when I will cut these guys off and then just let her settle down and give me some new growth whenever she's ready. It's a 50-50 thing here. I mean, I, would, I could let her bloom, but why? Why risk it? You see the back bowl here is so desiccated and I don't want to encourage that. I don't want, I don't want to waste the storage in the front here. I'd rather forfeit the spikes and then let her develop some new growth and get more established and really enjoy them next year. You see the back bulbs here of the Red Fantasy, they're all so super plump. Even the old ones. And that's what I want for my cinnamon. So doing okay, not as good as I would like. I'm not going to take an example out of my Red Fantasy here on the left because every twinkle is different. So this one is going to be tricked into blooming and then we'll cut them off. Here's my white fantasy. Yep, we have got nowhere with this one. I have her so protected under the table that's right here underneath because even the wind would blow her out of the pot. I have not done anything. I have not intervened. I have left her the way I potted her up. And you know what? This was the one I believe that we potted up when she was just showing signs of new growth. Well, she's not taken to this transition very kindly. You can see how desiccated the back bulbs are. Oof, so bad. We're curling. We're going into the inverted C's. But I'm going to leave her exactly how she is. She has some new growth coming, even though they're tiny, tiny, they won't amount to anything, but it is a structure. There is then more potential for photosynthesis on these small little leaves. And I'm going to just leave her as she is. As hot as it has been, these guys have all had foliar sprays, total and complete foliar sprays. They've got plain water in the reservoir. Let me qualify that. The two weaker ones have plain water in the reservoirs and they get foliar sprayed every day with fertilized water. And uh, Red Fantasy here has fertilized water in the reservoir plus gets foliar sprayed simply because A, I maintain the humidity. It's a thin leafed oncidium. It can absorb during the day. And these guys also get the humidity that they need around the base. 
So I'm still getting away with it, but not for long. And then I just have to be flushing and flushing, except especially with these two guys to get their roots established. But we will have twinkle blooms whenever it decides to bloom. And I think one twinkle and bloom at a time is best as well, simply because they are so fragrant and they'll knock you out of the room. Get three of them blooming at the same time. Whew. Yeah. Is anybody tired of Sologeny Lime Bay yet? <laughs> Do you know that if you're getting sick of her, let me tell you something. This could be going on for quite some time if I keep it together here, because I have seen Sologeny blooms now on and off since November 19. But uh, that was not the point of this. <laughs> Although maybe it is because I, I did a Sologeny um, repot while Lime Bay was in spike and my Pandorata was uh, going to crawl out of the pot and the pseudobulb would look funky. So let's just have a look at this uh, Lime Bay. And yes, if you're watching, you know who you are. I don't know if I can just say your name, but you're the one that uh, asked me about my Lime Bay and I want to be a little bit discreet because you came through email. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to show them and we can go from there. Lime Bay is doing really well. I have her up simply because of that pendant spike, which is growing and you can see that it's just getting longer and longer. We are now on bloom five and bud number six is already on the way. How long can I keep this up? I do not know, to be honest, but I did lose the spike, the first spike that she gave me for in 2019. I did lose that spike from the repot. I think we got to bloom number 13. Then I grew the second spike and then we had one one bloom show with two spikes in bloom. So yes, I managed to achieve that milestone. But yeah, I had to repot her. She was growing in the wrong direction of the pot. So I had to just reposition her and we saw that the root system wasn't as healthy as the Pandorata, but it wasn't bad, bad either. However, now it's gonna be good again because she is growing her roots from the new growth. So I'm really happy about this development, especially this time of year. I know she's going to regain strength because a new root system is also coming into effect. So let me move her out of the way and let's look at Pandorata. Doing superbly. Didn't skip a beat. Absolutely not. Has matured the growth that bloomed this year. I am keeping an eye on pests. The leaves are super strong. And let's see if this is webbing or just scarring. Scarring. But the leaves are tough as nails. The whole orchid is just a machine. I'm not going to pull her out, but trust me, she is pot bound again. So that up pot, which we did, we didn't clean the root bowl. I just took her. I saw how vigorous those roots were, how healthy the root bowl was and I just went up a size of pot. And yes, next year, when she grows her next new growth, probably down here, there's a nub there. Imagine getting two new growths in one year. That would be amazing. But um, I already have next size pot for her. <laughs> if, you, if you saw my um, video going to Viveros del Valle, the other garden center, I had two white square pots. Yeah, the second one was for Pandorata. I want to be ready for when the time comes and not have to go, ah, I need a pot. So that's gone to storage because, yep, this one is amazing. I love it. And I really am kind of, hope not too overconfident because I'm so looking forward to seeing those bright green chocolatey blooms again. Oh, and yes, from a inspiration from one of my viewers in the comments. This is my Pandorata mint chocolate. That's right. Mint chocolate. Makes sense to me. <laughs> so that's these two. Let's look at the Neos. Okay, so from when I took them out of their traditional setup as best as I could because I had very weak plants. I wasn't so 
invested in a traditional setup. There was nothing there for me to set up, but I moved them into semi-hydro, Leka only, very tall pots because Neos have long roots. So these are the guys that got transitioned very early in the season because I saw new root growth and I just went for it. So here's my Gojo Fukurin, not doing well. It has produced two leaves this season, sorry, three leaves, and it's lost two. Very slow grower for me, not established in the pot, not messing with it, just keeping that moss slightly damp and then changing it when it gets a little bit too icky for my liking. So not established. I'm not saying that it's a lost cause yet, this method. I am saying that Gojo Fukurin is a slow grower, regardless of what setup. It's been with me now three years and this is what I have to show for. It's not dead, it's just a slow grower. So I'm hoping. And here's Kibana, another super slow grower in my grow method. It is a slow grower. I've heard other stories not established. When it started growing a root, that root was going down, so I took the jump, I took the plunge and put it into this grow method. I did not distinguish Lekka size, I just went with Lekka, period. Because I want to be able to have these outside once they've matured in order to then keep them on the drier side. And the smaller the pebbles are, the sm like if I were to use ceramics, the harder it would be for me to monitor that. So this, I mean in the summer I just love the pouring of the water, the spraying of the water. So not bothered, it's the winters that I have to be very careful about. So I'm accommodated that with just Lekka, regardless of size. And then I got another wonderful root. Yes, and where is it going? Ah, goodness me. Well, this is my backup route now. I just like, okay, if you're not gonna go down, I keep you wet during the day. These guys, they get sprayed across the board into the crown and everything. I still have enough warm temperatures to do that once a day only, and then by the evening they're dried out. With Shutano back here, I think I almost missed the mark. So let's have a look. Shutano was doing really well. Bloomed for me this year, two spikes, fantastic. I also have a little growth here on the side, a new fan, which is awesome. But you can see the black leaf. Now, two things. This leaf started to de deteriorate from the inside out. It got yellow first, but with spots. You can see the black spots right here. And I think it had to do, almost got taken out by scale and I got there in time. Or mealybug, scale or mealybug, one of the two. I got there in time. The crown is not compromised. I have stopped spraying this one from the top. Obviously, I'm still keeping the perimeter moist, but <clears throat> that is not going to be sprayed anymore from the top because I have a similar incident right here. Second fan, you can see, I hope. Yeah, there we go. Brown leaf. I don't have another leaf coming through the middle, so I wonder if this is compromised. I don't see any issues on the stem. I'm not quite concerned just yet. The weeds are loving it. But uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit more cautious maybe now this time of year. Still spraying the perimeter. I have backed off from spraying the whole orchid top to bottom. Shuteno already lives outside. I want the climate to be now bringing this Neo into you are an outside dweller, you can take my winter temperatures, so you're staying outside. Next up, this is my set Suzanne. And this is not something that is damaged because of pests. This is the kind of variegation it has, the blotchy variegation. I paid a fortune for this one. I don't know if I did the wrong thing and if there would have been a cheaper one out there, but set Suzanne is not disappointing. This little fan started to grow at the beginning of the season and it's extending and it is quite pot bound. I have resistance, not too pot bound. I can't go crazy and yank away at it, but I have more resistance 
on Setsuan than on Kibana or even the um, Gojo Fukurin here. So <laughs> yeah, these two, Setsuzan and Shutana now live outside. These two are still in my indoor space, getting a taste of what's to come close to the outside environment, but I can react and close the door quickly if it gets too much. So that is my Neo update for now. I have, what else do I have? Stan Hopia. Let's look at Stan. I was gonna say Stan the man, but no, it's Stan the men. Oh well, let's have a look. I almost forgot to add Neo Phoenicia Falcata, the one that we transitioned from the traditional moss setup earlier in the season into my preferred setup of Leka and self-watering. Because I've been so focused on the little ones that we just saw, I'm like, oh my goodness, no, there's another one. So this one is in the growing season since we repotted it. It is now completely pot bound. Loving its life there in this setup and I am thoroughly enjoying the fact that it is loving its life because I'm not worried about algae anymore on the moss. I don't have to re-moss anymore. Some of the leaves are starting to yellow a little bit and that's fine because they're yellowing from the tips towards the stem. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about that, but they're not ready to come off just yet. Still have some new root growth going on, but I think that this is now it's kind of, well, decision-making time. Is it gonna go to sleep? Do I need to water less? I have got, see if I can do this one-handed. I have got the reservoir still a little bit filled with fertilized water. But I do, what I do every day is actually give it a foliar spray across the top to mist the roots that are in the air. It lives on the top shelf of my blooming alley where it gets a lot of bright light. And on some hazy days, I don't even close the curtain and you can see that I have had a little bit of sun damage on one of the leaves. But that's, you know, that comes with the territory. So this one is also going to live outside during the winter as it has done before because it is completely established, doing really well and I am so happy because normally I would be remossing at this time of the year and I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. If you haven't seen the video, I'm just going to reiterate that underneath here, it's mainly sitting on a bed of ceramis because ceramis is much more water retentive and it used to stay really, really wet. I used to keep it very wet when it was in its traditional setup during the summer. So I took that liberty to put more ceramis on the bottom to keep the roots in a similar environment to what they're used to and then filled out with lecker around the edges. And it worked. It's doing well. I'm really pleased about it. Highly recommended. <laughs> I was so eager to get to the Stanhopia here, the two pieces that I almost forgot my Neo Furcata. So <laughs> that was a close call, but I just wanted to show you piece number one and there's been some bruising on the leaves that were developing during the repot. So that's to be expected. This leaf was all curled up and just growing out like about this high when I was repotting it. Um, yeah, unfortunately then this is a result, the bruising of the repot, but it's developed, it's suitable and it looks to be quite okay despite that aesthetic blemish over there. This was last year's damage. Um, that was me. But uh, the bruises, especially as you can see here, that was from the repot. But look at what is going on. About a week or so after the repot, the roots were already starting to bounce back. This is a new growth that came after the repot. It wasn't there when we did the repot and I'm leaving it to grow through the basket. I'm not going to intervene. I check every day for anything happening underneath the stem because if I set it down like this and there could be a spike, then I'm in trouble. You see the layer is very, very thin. 
but I watch it every day and then I know, can I put it and set it down or do I have to be a little bit more careful? But I wanted to also show you, this here is the nub, the pseudobulb that developed after I had broken off the growth where I said five minutes into the repot, uh, that's not a good start. So this is the pseudobulb that developed from that growth that I destroyed and it is growing a new growth already to make up for what mess I made. The next one along is doing another new growth. Uh, can I just say it hasn't skipped a beat. I have two new growths coming right here with roots to boot. So these guys I am guiding up over because I find them a little bit too far away from the edge of this basket. So, you know, making sure that they grow up and over. But in general, Stan has not skipped a beat. Nothing. I, I am super impressed. I wonder if I will get any spikes anytime soon. But yeah, you can see it is now going nuts again and pushing out new growths as if there was nothing that happened to it. Or maybe because of what happened to it. So let's get the other piece if you still want to hang around and have a look at that. All right, let's look at it from the rude angle. <laughs> I wanted to show you root growth at the bottom. If I can get it to focus, please don't do this to me. I know it's all a bit wobbly, but ah, I hope that you can see there's roots coming. Now, some of them will go through one day and then they'll be snapped off because of, you know, mechanical damage, me manipulating and moving the plant. But you can see that they are either staying inside the material or crawling along it. But then there's also the option, maybe one day if there's a spike, we can see how that behaves. But you can see the roots aren't necessarily penetrating through for the sake of penetrating through. So that's why I'm watching and I didn't put another layer of the hob material. And above, all the growths that were growing while I was doing the repot or rebasket or whatever you want to call it, they have all matured. The ones that didn't break. Every day I go in and pull a little bit on this fern here. Now I can't see what I'm doing on the screen, but I hope that it's on focus just to relieve a little bit the pseudobulbs because I'm going into the colder time of year and uh, I don't want to risk it. But you can see the root growth is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. All through and in here, these mature pseudobulbs are now really taking off with regards to root growth. And it seems like my camera is having difficulty focusing because there's too much going on. That's nice. There we go, I think. There we go. Inside. So I can distinguish the ones that have matured because they still have their outer bracts on them. I haven't taken them off and I wait for it to become easier. And those are the ones that didn't skip a beat. And we can see here, this root, look at that. It does pierce through the material if it wants to. It has the strength to do so and any new roots that are developing might crawl or pierce through, either way. It's super interesting to watch. Do I have any new growth on this new piece? No. Look at these two wonky ones here. What are you doing? Good grief. This one, this one here is last year's growth that matured all wonky. And I thought, whoops, we went a bit heavy on the silicon there. But this one coming from it, this one is wonky too. So we've got the wonky stand and the not so wonky stand. But I don't have any more new growths coming on this piece. I could say yet. It's just developing, finished, maturing the other growths that were already there. So it's doing great. I have absolutely no complaints about this one either. The yellowing of the leaves is a deterioration from last year, so they're slowly dying back. Some have had a little bit too much sun because I wasn't paying attention. That was a locust from last year. 
who, like Red Bull, I gave it another set of wings when I saw it, what it was doing on my Stanhopia. I flicked it off so fast. Huh. Red Bull ain't nothing like that. Okay, so there we have it. Stan the men or men's, I don't know. But they're doing great. Absolutely wonderful. Really, really pleased. So let me know if uh, there's other updates you want to see that I haven't shown in a long, long time. I'd be very happy to say there's nothing going on or let's have a look-see. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And for the suggestion and question regarding the orchids via email. Thank you very much. See, it works. <laughs> have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Bye.